Welcome back to the Simonetta Lee Show. Today's episode will be full of laughs as I welcome Ricky Smiley, a legendary comedian, actor, TV host, and award-winning radio host of the nationally syndicated hit show, the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Welcome! I'm so Thank happy. you! <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. Uh, Ricky um, has hosted this show, like we were saying, uh, with the likes of Michelle Obama and Martin Lawrence as guests, uh, just to name a few. Um, he, he's been a comedian for more than 30 years and becoming famous for hit uh, hit pranks called, right? <laughs> yeah. I think he has toured uh, countless theaters and arenas across the country, starting multiple comedy specials, television series, productions from HBO to Fox and released eight best selling albums. Uh, you are incredible. Um, Ricky released his critically acclaimed memoir, Stand By Your Truth, then yes. run for your life in 2018 as well. So again, please uh, join uh, Ricky Smiley. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be on your show and congratulations you. to you and everything that you're doing. You are all, you are the hottest person on IG right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I love it. Yeah, so to begin, yeah. I would like to know when did comedy first begin playing in a role in your life and what inspired you to really make a career out of it? Especially, you know, as someone who became famous for, like we were saying, uh, prank calls. Yeah, uh, comedy kind of started with ADHD and they didn't have medicine for it. So. <laughs> I think I think that's everybody's problem. The very the short attention span, yes. uh, silly making jokes, could not pay attention in class. <laughs> Your brain was like a movie, and everything was funny. So I I always found the funny in everything, even in elementary school and in high school. So uh, once I got to college, I went to a comedy club, and I was like, you know what, I can do that. Nice. And so I made it happen. How did you start? But this is just me curiosity. How did you start with doing the prank calls? Like you just literally started with random people? Yeah, it was this guy by the name of Sammy Mack. Uh, he had a morning show in Birmingham, Alabama called the Buck Wild Morning Show. And after the show, I would stay and do prank phone calls. We would just have a listing. Had a, they had the phone book back in the day. The big, oh, big, the yeah. big thick phone book and we would just open it up and randomly call people and uh that was before uh star 69 and star 67 people couldn't block your calls back then so we were able to call people and uh and do prank phone calls they're hard to do now but we were able to do it is there any uh prank calls that you really remember that you know it was so funny you were uh, laughing on your pants so it's like what the heck did i do here yeah, I did a prank phone call on my uh, next door neighbor and his dad. I was at my grandma's house. And so the people that live next door to my grandma, I called them pretending to be the radio station and told them that they won uh, uh, tickets to see the Jackson, but they had to be at the radio station in 30 minutes. And I sat on the front porch and watched uh, my neighbor and his dad literally run out of the house and peel off out of the driveway head to the radio station. And I about died. <laughs> But <laughs> did but they, they know at the end that it was you, or they never knew? Still to this day, maybe they know now. <laughs> they, they probably know oh, now. <laughs> but they came back driving real slow and disappointed, so that was even funnier than when they <laughs> left. <laughs> so I would like to continue. So I heard that your portfolio consists of everything from stand-up comedy, like we were saying, uh, tours to TV hosting. And what type of performance has proven uh, to you to be, uh, you know, the most challenging and also most fulfilling? And, you know, again, to you and your career. You know what? Uh, actually, performing live, live on stage is so easy now. I can literally walk on stage and just grab a mic and have a conversation and oh. just go off the top of my head. Wow. 33 years of, of stand-up comedy. Wow. You have a little, your preparation is like that. Sometimes it's just a feeling once you lock in mm -hmm. uh, five minutes before you go on stage and just kind of lock in uh, and, and you, you're watching your opening act, seeing what, what they're laughing at and seeing what the vibe of the audience yeah. is. So important. 
yeah. And once you catch the vibe, you're like, oh, okay. Uh, they're a little stiff. I need to go this way. Okay, they're laughing. I need to go this way. And it's just all about the first three minutes on stage. So once you lock in the first three minutes and, you know, you kind of know what kind of show you're going to have. Yes. And, uh, and just try to have a good time. Yes. It's just so important what you said, you know, that's the beauty of the live, you know, like being there and listening to that energy and, you know, yeah. suck it up and then go with it. I'm sure that, of course, you have, you know, your show prepared, but then you go with what, like you were saying, with what comes, you know, maybe they give you something, they tell you something and you respond and that yeah. actually, it excites people, you know, because it's real. Yeah. Yeah. And I have my, sometimes I have my cue card. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> have my little cue card on the front of the stage with little talking points. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, yeah, we call it, we call it a cheat sheet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's like if they kind of, you know, tell you something, you go out with it, then you go back and say, okay, let's go back to what I was yeah. saying, right? Yes. Yeah. Not- and, 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 and I like to move around on the stage. So I'm really, really physical. Yes. Back and forth. So I really try to give the fans a show. Yes. Uh, uh, give them their money's worth and uh, just have a lot of a lot of fun on stage. Uh, that's probably the only thing I could do without is to travel. And if I could just wake up out of my bed and uh, get out of my bed and walk on stage, that would be the perfect life. I would do it every night. <laughs> I just think it's beautiful for, like I said, you know, people that come and, and watch shows to also know that whenever, you know, you're going there, you're not just watching something, you're actually contributing. I remember one time I was in Italy and I was in a very small theater in Rome, you know, one of those like older spots with, you know, the red chairs, you know, all like old school. And I was actually watching a comedian and that day I had a stiff neck. So, you know, those chairs are low. So I was kind of, you know, going down to, you know, just rest my neck. And it was too funny because he was going with probably his uh, cheat sheet, like you were saying. It was going, but then he saw me and he started actually trying. He's like, "Are you born, Miss?" And actually, everyone started laughing. I felt so embarrassed. I'm like, "No, sir, I just have you know stiff neck." He, it, it was. I just remember how funny that was, and yeah. everyone started laughing. And then he went back probably to his cheat sheet <laughs> and continued. But you know that's so important. So if you go and see Ricky, remember that also your energy will be you know. I need that's right. That's right. Yeah. I need you know because really because comedians, uh, we really feed off of that energy. So Correct. like you said, that was really really important. Uh, you know, uh, we have a job to do, but you have a job to do is to right. clap, laugh, participate, scream, yes. dance to the music, have a good time, and uh, so you put that together, you have a great uh, a great atmosphere I mean, and a great show. Yes. So you are, like we were saying, an award-winning host for your radio show, which is broadcasted daily to more than 60 cities around the country. So I would like to know what this platform means, you know, to you and how you actually curate, you know, your content and messaging for your listeners. Yeah, uh, uh, we've been on the air 15 years. Wow. Uh, We took over when a legendary Tom Jordan retired. So they moved us move uh, my morning show from the hip hop over into uh, 2554 mm-hmm. age, 2554 demographic. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot more laid back. The music yeah. is a little more laid back. It's not the hip hop music or whatever. So, uh, but it's a lot of fun. We tackle uh, this month. We're dealing with breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do domestic violence awareness. We do health. Uh, we do comedy. We make people laugh. We do uh, spiritual. At the beginning of the show, we do a word of the day, oh, uh, with oh. a gospel song. Wow. And uh, we have uh, guests from uh, the president of the United States, vice president of the United States, to actors, actresses, comedians, athletes. Yeah. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. And everybody, uh, you know, they like to come on the morning show. And uh, we, we have a great time. And after the morning show, uh, I used to be on the show called Dish Nation. Yes. Uh, I read that it. was recorded in the studio. It was originally yes. uh, recorded in the studio, but I just couldn't sit in the same room for eight hours because ADHD kicked in. All right. <laughs> right, right. But but I, I've done, um, um, you know, getting, getting, getting ready to get back into television and film. Mm-hmm. So I've done some movies. I was in the movie Friday After Next. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Ice Cube and Mike Epps yeah. and Cat Williams, I was the Santa Claus. Whoa! 
I want to see you at Santa Claus. <laughs> that was me breaking in the houses, <laughs> stealing the gifts. <laughs> So, you know, for your radio show, do you actually select all the content and the people that you will interview or you have a team? How does that work? Yeah, I have a team. I have a great team of producers. They're wonderful. They put the talent together, put the script, have it in the iPad. So you sit in the chair, you just kind of scroll every hour and just make it happen. It's a lot of fun. Easy job starts at 5 a.m. So you're up at 3.30. Uh, You have to have discipline. You can't be out in the streets hanging out at yeah, night. You have to go to bed, go to sleep, 8.30, night, night. <laughs> uh, what time do you finish? So you start 3.30, is that, and then the show starts at 5, you said? Yeah, the show starts at 5, wow. and um, I'm off about 8.30. Okay. And then what do you do with your day? You just rest a little bit, or, because that's a lot. You know, yeah. so you so early. Uh, watch old uh, Alabama football games. And, oh, okay. And, okay. Uh, first First 48 in my 600-pound life. And then again, I know that you also like the Eagles, so thank you for that. You know, we're doing pretty good. I mean, it looks like, that you know, we're pretty, we're winning. So, you know, I'm hoping. (laughs) I'm joking because when I, so I'm originally from Italy. When I moved to this country, actually a couple of years after that I moved to this country, Finally, Eagles won the Super Bowl. I said, I brought them luck. And I didn't know anything about American football. You have to understand, as an Italian girl, we have soccer, right? That's what we had. So I can't yeah. try to, I know nothing about American football. And I started to learn about American football with the Eagles. At the end, by the end of you know the season, I was the girl like on the floor, literally, you know, begging, doing all my scare yeah. things. <laughs> and- <laughs> And Jalen Hurts uh, is from, uh, he played football at Alabama. He's my fraternity brother. Uh, we're all a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Jalen Hurts, your quarterback okay. and your Heisman Trophy winning wide receiver, uh, Smitty, uh, is from Alabama as well. Wow. So, uh, and that's why the Eagles are undefeated. So let's, let's go, go Eagles. Eagles. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so touching on your book, you know, like we were talking before, it's called Stand by Your Truth, Then Run for Your Life. Uh, I would like to know what does this statement, you know, really mean to you? And how have you, uh, you know, stood by your truth during also challenging times, you know, throughout your life? Yeah, you have to stand by your truth. And uh, when I say run for your life, because a lot of people can't handle the truth. Oh, so once you tell the truth, you got to tuck and run because everybody's so sensitive. Yeah. You can't say anything. But that oh. book, that book is like a mix. It's a memoir mixed with some funny stories. A great book. You can order it off of Amazon. But it's a great, great, great book. But when you do tell the truth, you have to run for your life yeah. because people don't like the truth and oh. you just can't say anything anymore. But I said I, I say it all in the book. Wasn't it fun when we could make fun of everybody? Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember actually, you know, rest in peace. I was talking about this uh, point with uh, Bob Saget when he came on my show, you know, mm-hmm. and he was saying the same. It's like, you know, I had this problem. Like, you know, you really don't know where to go as a comedian. I mean, it must be very, very hard for a comedian. And no, I'll say I, I, I just say what I want to say. I don't care. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You either love you either love me or hate me. Uh, my show is, is not is not for the easily offended. <laughs> I want to, I again. I want to go back to those times that we make fun of everybody. You offend everybody, so you don't offend anybody. That's you know. That's yeah. They, they, yeah, they didn't grow up like like you and I, like we did. We grew up with thick skin, baby. We Correct. could take it. Bring it on. Come on, bring it on. Just you know, make yeah. fun of it. Come on. <laughs> I just you know wish, and then also that you know you say something, and I oh I have to, you have to apologize and go to your you know your team and say how to apologize for this. Come on, people. Right. No fuck. So boring. Yeah. <laughs> this is it, right. So is there also a specific time in your life that you can, uh, you know, share with me regarding what you feel has been your maybe biggest rejection that you faced and how you actually overcame that? Oh, God. Uh, Yeah, I was doing, you know, the TV show Showtime, the Apollo back in the day. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I got booed on Showtime at the Apollo. Uh, And when it was known that I was from Alabama, 
the oh. audience start booing uh, when I was walking out on stage. Oh. So, so Mark Curry, who was the host, he, he looked at me. He said, hey, do your stuff. Yes. Do your stuff. He said, play to the cameras. He said, they're going to edit it. I said, okay. While they were booing, I could barely hear him. So I walked on stage and I did a whole comedy routine with the audience booing. Wow. And I, I walked on stage, but when it aired, it, they made me look like the biggest star ever. It was like, thank you, standing ovation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> True story. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That must have been, I mean, how difficult that must have been, you know, to be there, keep on going with your, I'm sure that you use a cheat sheet a lot because like you needed that. You got so distracted. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That, that was that. And then back then it wasn't a cheat sheet. I had to do that. Like I had to oh, lock yeah. in. Yeah. And, and, uh, so that was a big test for me. And on the personal side, uh, I was a gunshot victim, uh, uh, due to violence in 95, I almost lost my life. So that was probably the biggest challenge of my life when you're laying on the ground, don't know don't know whether you're going to make it or not. Oh, uh, no. uh, so I ended up, I was in surgery for six hours. Uh, it was a robbery. Oh. Uh, I was an innocent victim in the wrong place at the wrong time. Fine. And uh, that guy did 25 years in prison, got out and got killed three months later. Can you believe it? So I'm going to write about that in my next book. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I did write about a lot of that in, in the book. In the book. So if you want to know about that night mm -hmm. uh, when my life was almost taken, um, it's, it's, in, it's, in the book. it's in the book. Wow. That must have been something. And I really want to read your book. And I want to come on your radio show if you would like to have me. Absolutely. Right. You got to come on my radio show. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I got some other platforms that I'm working on. I would like for you to uh, come on as well. Okay, Absolutely. Okay. okay. What are you doing? Tell me something, if you can. I'm working on my podcast, uh, and my podcast is going to be a, a platform similar uh, similar to yours, where I'm going to be okay. interviewing actors, actresses, rappers, okay. singers uh, in the Atlanta area. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I'm going to be doing some little small stuff and some television shows and some movies. So if I have to be on your podcast, I have to come to Atlanta, right? I've never been no. to Atlanta, so... And if I you want to come to... Yeah. yeah, I would love to have you. If you want to come to Atlanta, you can or whatever. But, you know, if, if you can't make it, we can do it just like this. We're going to make it happen. We can make it happen. That will be. But I really want to come to Atlanta because I've never been to Atlanta. So if you can take me around, I'll come. Oh, yeah. Come on. Atlanta's a lot of fun. I'm you sure. would love it. You're going to be on a tour, right? Also for your comedy? Yes. We're just hilarious. Um, uh, comedian B. Simone. Uh, uh, D. Ray Davis. Okay. Uh, so that's a big tour and it's a lot of fun. So Amazing. I'm excited about that. Do you know if you ever will come to Philly in your tour? Yeah, I think, think we are coming to Philly. I can check, but I've been to Philly several times and okay. I always stay at that Four Seasons Hotel. The lobby is on the 80th floor and they didn't tell me that the lobby was on the 80th floor and there was a glass elevator. I was up against the door and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And when the doors open, I fell into the lobby panicking because I'm afraid of height. But uh, that's the one thing I love about Philly. I love that Four Seasons Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you come to Philly, I'll come to, you know, see you uh, and, you know, of course, for your comedy and also maybe at your hotel because I want to see that. And Absolutely. Maybe I'll take you to have some, I don't know, I'm sure you had a lot of cheesesteaks, but I don't know if you had the real ones because a lot of people go to, you know, the ones that are more famous, but I know right. the good ones, you know? Yeah, we got to go to the real we'll ones. Say it. And I'm I'll a fan you. of Italian food. Mm, Italian uh, is, is like my favorite. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've taken some Italian cooking. Lessons. That sense? So okay. I really know how to get down a little bit. So maybe if you come to Philly, we can also. So my husband cooks everything, like yes. making his own pasta to you know his own sauces to everything. So maybe we'll we'll teach you something because Italian. Let's do it. Is, right? You'll do. You'll learn from real Italian. <laughs> I love this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs>